A global citizen is someone who is aware of and understands the wider world and their place in it. They take an active role in their community and work with others to make our planet more equal, fair, and sustainable. Now remember, you can join this conversation, tweet at us, plus TV Africa or at Wayshow Africa One, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. And we still have our futurist here, Ola Kunle Sherio. Now, before we went on the break, um, we had you um, in January, and we were talking about the Nigerian identity. And we've seen the we've seen how people are running. It's almost like every family you go to, there's one, two, three people, yeah, you know, that one, you know, then people, and I'm, I'm sure part of the ban in the U.S. is because people started using visiting visas to go illegally mm -hmm. just for anything but Nigeria. How do we um, correct this? Because I think for me, it's just too much. Like you rightly said, mm -hmm. all fingers are not equal. Not mm -hmm. many people can, uh, not everybody can go abroad. So how do we correct this mindset of survival that I'm going there and start to re-engineer the minds to begin to see this as a strategic tool mm -hmm. to coming back to your country to build a country as a global citizen? To add to that, I like that you said strategic because I understand Canada, the US, um, the United Kingdom. I don't understand the people human trafficking to Libya, to Egypt. Lebanon, just because you want to leave Nigeria. How, how do you... Because this is everywhere. your life and your children. You have to be strategic about yeah. it. It just has to make you sense. Know, I've learned something. Um, I've learned not to confuse what is easy for me to do or what is easy at all. Um, it's easy for me to do some things because of how providence brought me up. Right. The exposure I've had in one way or the other, you know. So, um, but a lot of what is easy for me, they're not easy things. They're just easy for me. Some things are easy for you. Some things are even easy for us to see, mm -hmm. but some cannot just see it. Right. It is justifiable. You know, I don't judge those who are running away. You know, I'm a visionary. There's a lot that defines who I am. So I can't run away because I understand too much to run away. Mm -hmm. Some people don't have 1% of the clarity I have every day. You see, when we know better, we do better. And the options available to people pretty much determine the weight of their decisions. It's what they see. Um, nobody wants to be a fool, I can promise you that. Nobody wants to you know, go somewhere and live a life that is comp comp you know, void of dignity, of honor. You know, but people do those things because of a lot of, some, some even do them for reasons beyond themselves, maybe for their children. Yeah. You know, most of the time. Some compromise their entire career just because they look at the future and they say, if I have a fantastic career, what do I leave for my children? And just Even if I leave a lot of money for them, they have a system that is retrogressive, that eats up their talent on a daily basis. Let's, yeah. let's call a spade a spade. Um, there's nothing happening in Nigeria now mm -hmm. that suggests that Nigeria will be better. You guys can be full of faith, you know. Um, the Nigerian can, Christian woman in me was going to say, God forbid. Yeah, you know. Of course, um, no, 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 I don't say that. I'm a know, realist. I, I, I have to be very honest with you. I'm a pastor, right? right. So uh, I've read the Bible about, with all humility, maybe 30 times, Genesis to Revelation. Nobody can fool me mm. about what is in there. I know it. Um, hope is not a strategy, right? Um, if you have a younger brother, and you say, what's your plan for this year? He said, I don't know, but God will do it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm sure you'll be very dis de we, depressed. We if you have a child or you have a head of the business development, and you say, what's our goal for this year? He said, say, sir, I don't know, but God the will final. do it. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that's Don't come in tomorrow. <laughs> you know, we can't take it from our wives or from our husbands. We can't take such hope as an, hope as an independent variable from our children, from our workers, but we take it for Nigeria. Mm. I ask everybody in this country, I've asked whoever cares to, what is the future for Nigeria? All they give you is hope and hope, hope. and yeah. hope. Even the Bible says hope. Without work. Hope um, that is sustained unnecessarily because the Bible says hope deferred make the heart sick. 
It is the hope that is doing the making. <laughs> hope. And the fundamentals hope, are just wrong. Hope run, run as an independent variable will wear you out. Hope is a dependent variable. You have to mix some other variables with hope to, for you to make sense. So the truth is, people run away because the future is bleak. So, and, so for and, how do and we re engineer that mind? So I, I don't think we should control that. I don't that. want to re engineer that. So, 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 so this is what I think. This is what I think. The, the machination that we reorientate Nigerians mm -hmm. is a symposium discussion. We can't even go 1% into that conversation on this show. There's a lot of work to you know, be if done. You, if you want to give me a public office and you say, where do you want to, you know, I think the weakest office to transform Nigeria is, is the office of the president. Yeah. It's know, a bottom up. You know, I think it's I would rather be the, the DJ of orientation, national mm -hmm. orientation. I think that is a fantastic yeah. place to be. Yes. Uh, the Ministry but of I don't Education. Agree. Yes. I don't agree. Oh, you the know. Ministry of Education. But that orientation, what do you, people keep on saying yeah, we have to change the orientation? But nothing is in place. What nothing is working. What, so what we change it. What we change it. What we change it is that's why I said I don't want us to go in there. Mm -hmm. Because what can change national orientation? Is common comprehension. Um, if you, if we, if any Nigerian says a, every Nigerian should understand mm -hmm. what you are talking about. Now, English language has not done that. Neither can it. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, that, so that, I don't want us to go into that so, that space. I've done interviews on some other shows add. that have addressed that. But may I just but, add, bring it back? But, but, sorry, add. Add. but, okay. but sorry, man. But what I want to um, talk about is what I think we should be doing. I don't think we should worry about those who are living unguardedly in the pursuit of their economics. For some of those people, probably if they don't leave, they, they don't have any other option here. Yeah. It's going to be worse. Yeah. So whatever compromise they are making to go find balance, because the guy who has gone there doesn't have a job, he doesn't have a great job, maybe he's earning $4,000 in a month from all his hustle, yeah. and he's a driver. Making more money than a bank be manager fine. The in Nigeria. Works over so, time. and if he comes here home every December, mm. you will still praise him, and the bank That's manager will be humble. So, still so those are issues we shouldn't. And he has access to all about. the basic yeah. amenities right? of life. What we should worry about is, you know, when you make that kind of a move, or when you make an, that kind of a move, we have the exposure. Right. We have the quality to do better. We are not going there because we want to. Um, I mean, I'm talking from Nigeria right now. Right? So it's not about running away. You know, it's really about how strategic you are and the, and the, and the contribution okay. you want to make. Vicky, let me take some uh, messages. Yes. Someone says, Hi, highways, the depth of uh, migration cannot be overemphasized. A friend traveled to Canada through the border from the US with an asylum claim and two kids. He left a personal home, husband, and pretty successful life in Nigeria to stay in a shelter for months. The nice part is after after months, she has been given a stay, and I think maybe she's getting a better job now. Mm -hmm. And it, the person further says, I think a better Nigeria can help improve mindset. So that is it. Now, yeah. a better Nigeria is not the responsibility of that person no. alone. It's collective. So, and, and let me say this: it is the person that is well that can donate blood, hmm. right? You have to be well. If you go to the hospital, say, I want to give you all my blood and your HIV positive. Yes, they will appreciate you. <laughs> they will celebrate your offer. But they will reject it. This, this blood cannot offer support. That's correct. So people need to be well. It's called capacity. Mm. You know, and like I say, I'm not going to use my life to judge the decisions of the majority. They don't have my options. They don't see what I see. That's true. You know, so I respect some of those decisions. Some of them are making the highest sacrifices, you know, for their family. For them to do that. And you know what you just said now, NASA is saying that, um, can you please ask PK why he keeps coming back? You mentioned something very profound. They don't see what you see. Yes. Mm -hmm. They don't understand yes. what you understand. Yes. Yeah. So you keep coming back home, despite the fact that you live in the US, yes. you come back home all the time. Yeah. Why? Because you penetrated. Yeah, because I didn't relocate in the way they call relocation. You only penetrated so Microsoft US is in Nigeria, and Nigeria. But Microsoft has not relocated to Nigeria. Facebook is here. Businesses are here, they didn't relocate yeah. here. They it's send profound. expatriates here to come and work and do all of that. They didn't relocate. And expatriate is working in Nigeria, he didn't relocate his family. He still, he, knows, he has a country, but he's here to pick value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not out in the world because I have a problem with what I'm doing. I was doing I'm doing well here. I, didn't, mm -hmm. I should not even use the word because I'm still here. Yeah. I have my life here. 
I'm doing well here. I'm on TV here. You don't call fools to come here. <laughs> so what I, what and I didn't build this with. pedigree. Mm -hmm. I didn't build it from abroad. It's because mm -hmm. I've done something locally. I've earned a pedigree here. And it's time for me to go out to the world, you know, and capture a larger space and still bring all that value here. Okay, so I see value here. There's a lot going on in Nigeria. But I must also admit that it has taken years of training and exposure for me to be able to see what I see. A lot of other people, the future is mm. bleak. They don't see, right. right? And so for every Uwasale, there are probably a million girls that are wrecked. For every you, mm. for, ev for every Ola Commission, there are probably you know, 300, maybe 300,000 or 5 million people I cannot see what I see or sit where I sit. You know, so um, we are the exception. We, we are in the 1% of the 1%. That's mm -hmm. reality. So we should not for any reason judge those who accept those flawed paths to express, you know, their highest desires. We res I respect it. I won't do it. I won't counsel people to live like that. But those who do, I don't judge them, right? The question we should ask is what is going wrong in our country? Why are people leaving? Why are Americans not running away? Why are British citizens mm. not running away from their country? There's a question that has been answered for the collective aspirations of their people. And by the time an American is leaving America, he's going to the world to conquer. He's, coming, he's going to bring spoil home. Mm. That's what should be happening. If only a few people can leave Nigeria to go bring spoil home, mm -hmm. to go conquer the world. Yeah. The people live here because they are running away from something right mm. so there's no way to judge those who are running away without judging what is chasing them away there's something fundamentally wrong wow you know and that is what i th what i think the challenge is mm. right so if we were to because we we i i really love the concept of getting people to understand that you should be you should be gunning for that global citizen status so if we were to measure that parameter, what would it be? There are five things yeah. that determine um, the quality of a society. And when you hear first world nations, first mm -hmm. world nations, developed countries, it's basically about five things. One, quality of life. Mm -hmm. Two, equal opportunities. Three, enabling environment. Four, access to credit. Five, power of the currency. When you hear a first world country, it is to the degree that they have these five things. The ones that have it to a certain degree, you know, America is the superpower in the world because they are, mm -hmm. when you aggregate all of those things, they have it in the highest, highest weighting. weighting, right? Peak Gabon, or peak Nigeria, quality of life. Zero. Enabling environment. Zero. Um, uh, equal opportunities. Not there's even no merit. There's, not at all. there's even no merit. To credit. Exist. No. Not at all. Access to credit, mm, nothing, nothing like that. Nothing. Right? Also Power of the zero. currency, zero. So we really don't have a system that is um, delivering happiness, that is delivering progress, that is, you know, helping every iota of talent and gifting in the country. Mm -hmm. When that is not there, people will react. You can't be and expect me to give you thumbs up. But what I is can't the reaction? That. Must the reaction be to relocate? So I mean, why are we I mean, you not know, so coming and, so this is the thing and you facing... Yeah. So this is the thing. You can't slap me and tell me how to cry. Hmm. Exactly. Ooh. Well, somebody else will not even cry at all. So our threshold for... We are tolerating this a lot. So that's why everybody's angry and always frustrated and always and that's fighting. Why we are you know, because you know, you can slap me and I may not cry. If you slap her, she may cry. If mm. you slap her, she may punch you back. Mm -hmm. I may not punch you back. She may punch you back. You know, mm -hmm. we can't control, you know, if you are, cannot deliver on the basic that supports the human condition, you have lost your right to worry about how we react about it. It's like you do wrong and you are also worried about the method of correction. If you don't want to be corrected in a wrong way, do right. Do wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't do wrong and say, why are you raising your voice on me? Then you should not do wrong. You because you, you can't control both sides. You refuse to control yourself, you did wrong. Then you want to control me for how I react. Mm. You know, you shouldn't do that. It doesn't justify my reaction. True. It doesn't make it right. But you have no, lost the local standing. You don't have the moral authority to question the way I'm reacting. You know, so something that has to, has to question me. I think that is what is wrong. And... The people who manage the affairs of our country, and by that I don't mean people in government alone. I mean 
everybody in a place of parenting. Um, because pa parenting is not just biological, mm -hmm. right? Teachers are parents. Police officers are parents. Um, everybody, Can anyone that can yeah. offer any influence on, the on child. a child is a parent. When you go close to those people, they are also victims. Yeah. Look, slavery and poverty are the same thing. Some people are so poor, all they have is money. And I put three words together every time. Poverty, slavery, and being a victim. They are the same thing by one definition. When the human spirit or the human soul or the human life has no control over its necessary deal human experiences, that human life is either a slave or is a victim mm -hmm. or is poor. Yeah. When you are poor, what you really cannot do is you have no control you have no over your necessary human experience. Yeah. When you are a slave, that's what you really cannot do. Even if you have the freedom to move around, if you cannot control your deal necessary human, human, human experiences, then you are a slave, right? So some people have a lot of money, but when you go close to them, they are still slaves. They have no control over their necessary deal. They can't defend the human condition. So they live spontaneously, instinctively like animals. You know, and, and, and again, you know, that's why I said to somebody today, most of the people in our leadership, they are incapable of honest self-evaluation first. <laughs> and that is not a problem of leadership, that's a Nigerian problem. Yes, I always say. You know, I have, a, I have a parable, and I think I shared the parable the last time I was here. I call it the parable of, eggs. of the raw eggs. Mm. You, have a, you have a basket of raw eggs. Every four years, you go to that basket to pick four eggs that represent the basket. Mm -hmm. You break the eggs into the fry pan. They are rotting eggs. You got angry. Four years after, you pick another four, mm -hmm. randomly. You broke them into the fry pan, rotting eggs. Mm -hmm. Four years after, again, you went, you pick another four. And for 50 years, oh, you've wow. been going thing. to this basket to pick four eggs randomly to represent the basket. And every time you break them into the fry pan for us, for the, us to consume, they are rotting eggs. Mm. It's 50 years, not long enough. So ask yourself, if this, the, basket, after, 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 after if, the year. if this basket itself is not a basket of rotting eggs, oh my. because Nigerian leadership is not outsourced and it's not it's imported. From Nigerians. It's from amongst Nigerians that we pick our leadership. So what? Throw the basket so, away? So <laughs> the basket we must turn to because Nigerians are the problem. Mm. There's a lot fundamentally wrong with us. Yeah. Part of it is this English language we are speaking. When we are talking about national identity, right. we need to address this English language because it's a problem. You know, a, a guy, for example, sat for school sat mm -hmm. and had three credits. Of course, he struggled with some other credits, but he couldn't pass English language. Then I asked him, which subject did you pass? He passed commerce, passed economics, he passed some, maybe government. But the questions were in English. Which language did you use to pass those subjects? Mm -hmm. English language. Okay? And the English language that you used to pass those ones, you couldn't mm -hmm. pass it. Mm -hmm. So when the examiner is testing your paper, therefore, it's not testing the use of English, because you could use it to pass three other subjects. Right. It's, it's testing the technicality of English. Exactly. Meaning that no matter how well you can speak mm -hmm. or write, if you mm -hmm. cannot tell the difference between a pronoun or an adjective, an you're not going to pass. Mm -hmm. Or between a clause or a phrase, you're not going to pass. Mm -hmm. The next question is, what is the goal of Ligua Franca? Is it communication or sophistication? Because if it is communication, if I say, I'm go to Lagos, I've communicated. You understand oh, me? Yes. You shouldn't judge me <laughs> yes. that I say, I'm go to Lagos. You get me. Yes. But I'm not going to progress. In my own country, it's not my fault that I'm an Ijebu man. It's not my fault that I'm an Igbo man. In fact, I am not an English man. Mm. Therefore, if I struggle with another man's language, I should not be judged for that. You see, so, but English language is a determinant of progress in our own country. I'm not saying we should eliminate it, I think it's too late. But we can reduce its powers. These are symposium discussions. But we have to come to a place where every Nigerian understands GDP, mm -hmm. jobs, mm -hmm. right? Um, per capita income. When we get to that place, mm -hmm. right, that is when we can begin to judge our people, whether they are loyal, right. or whether they are patriotic or not. We don't even understand what the issues are. Wow. We are very few that have understand, understand the it. issue. So one just say, let me let's quickly uh, says um, we, hashtag waste the basket is back.
to family structures and values. Yes. And the person also was talking about um, people wanting to have children abroad at all costs. Why? It's still part of all of these parameters of that you've said. I think we would, um, if you are coming again next month, we will bring you back. <laughs> you know, because the truth is, for us here, we, we are not just, we're not just a talk show. Mm. The goal is, we, this is our own way of helping people out there. I know more people will still relocate. And people that are watching this show are intellectuals. So maybe they should re-strategize yes. on their methodology or they and, have to and change their that. mission. They have to shift from survival, survival. to thrive. penetration. Penetration. You want to thrive. Yeah. You know? And that, that doesn't require you running away from yeah. your country. Thank but you. But finding so value much. and connecting with it. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so <laughs> nice when we have when we have PK, we never we never have enough time. All right, so you can and watch the repeat broadcast on Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation, ladies. And remember to keep all the conversations coming on all our social media platform as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is. It is important to be a global citizen. At the same time, appreciate.